It's task time. The generator demands we obtain a unique from the Anima Islands minigame. We can get a maximum of 1,000 points from a single game, but the cheapest reward only costs 500 points, so we only need to play a single game for now. I'm pretty sure we'll get this task half a dozen times before moving on to the next tier. I think I'll avoid gaining extra XP from the islands. See, the minigame is broken up into four parts, each part filling up this bar here to the next breakpoint at 25, 50, 75, and 100%. Once you get 25% on one island, it can't go any higher, but you can still skill to get XP. I'd rather avoid that. A bit disappointed that I messed up one of the islands and only got 981 anima. That'll be annoying in the future. I'll get the calibration device of magic offhand override. Create 20 impious incense sticks, or is it impious? Hmm. So we need 40 impious, yeah, I'm gonna say impious, ashes and 40 regular logs. And to speed up the collection of those logs, why don't we go check on our brewing cider? Thank God it didn't spoil. Hand out the cider in the bar and claim the Sears headband one in the XP lamp. Of course, I'll use the XP lamp on Herblore. But more importantly, while wearing the headband, we will cut two normal logs rather than one. A remarkably niche perk, but where it's useful, it's really useful. For impious ashes, spell wisps. You can even deposit them with wizard myrtle nearby. Apparently this is a decent money-making method in free-to-play. This task also comes with a new unlock. We are now allowed to stack 20 impious incense sticks in our bank. Herbs can be applied to them when your active task would benefit from their effect. You cannot train either fire making or herb lore to create incense sticks above your level range. I don't know what we'll use impious incense sticks for, but it's nice to know I can use them freely. Unlock the ability to claim your own island. Complete the Flagfall mini quest. Five supplies can be acquired from the crate near Rosie's supply shop every day. Awesome. We can finally unlock the Ark and start working on the slew of passive tasks therein, like finding birds and castaways. Time to impress the locals. Weird, I didn't get a quest complete screen. Sharkbone Hoo-Ha-Ha gives us the Ark Journal, a very useful item for teleporting to Northern Port Sarim. Now we need to speak with Bonnie and get the Flag Palm mini quest. We need five driftwood, which can only be obtained on the Uncharted Islands. We can gather 50 supplies from the supply crate near Rosie, so we have a limit to the number of islands we can travel to before needing to grind chimes for more supplies. I'll collect seashells while on the island as well, since they sell for a handful of chimes could be useful. This island may not be useful, but I'm going to claim it anyway. I dub the Isle Task Ground. And, as is tradition among explorers of antiquity, it's time to exploit the island's natural resources and abuse the native population. Before we roll the next task, I want to do some time-sensitive passive arc tasks. Spot a crested Salago Snatcher? Chat with Milky Joel. Sit down with Tiffy in Falador Park. Alright. Hey Tiff. Hello, old bead. Well, see ya. That is my Sir Tiffy Cashin voice. I'm sorry. Super duper secret task number 23. Have Aram the Blighted fill a bucket for you. What? What's with these random ass tasks all of a sudden? For some reason, Aram pops up and fills your bucket with water if you use a bucket on the well near Barrows. This implies Aram is on the lunar spellbook. That explains why Cyrisius uses Aram's robes, I guess. Complete a game of Cabbage Face Punch Bonanza and buy at least one Patch Bomb. Patch Bombs can be bought for 30 Renown each. You get double Renown for the first 600 points you get in a day, so I only need 15 points in the game. Really quick task. Oh, I gotta kill more rabbits. Obtain a Relic and Cream Rabbit for your player on farm. Poor Bun Buns. Oh, they're even called bunnies. 44 poor babies. Could be worse, I suppose. Just because I'm a murder hobo doesn't mean I want to kill bunnies. I'd rather kill people in Minecraft. Register a total of four unique items in the Asgarnia and Mistlands section of your Slayer Log. I think our best option out of this list is one of these Skull Scepter pieces. The right skull half drops from Minotaurs on the first level, so that's our next target. Skull and 26 kills. I had the drop logger set up incorrectly and it was tracking loot, not actual drops, so I had to reset it partway through to change the settings. It ended up being 26 Minotaurs. Charge the Noragi Engram at the Memorial to Guthix and complete the, t t t t t t complete the tutorial. Requires 500 Pale Energy and 80 Memory Strands. Normally we'd have to get this Engram from Naragun following the completion of the World Wakes, but fortunately we get one during the Memorial tutorial, so we just need to farm up 500 Pale Energy. This was pretty much the way I trained Divination on Ferris Noise. I just gather incandescent energy with the Divine Conversion Relic Power, accumulate Memory Strands, then turn in all 12 Engrams at the same time. It wasn't fast XP, but it was really really satisfying to see huge XP drops. I prefer converting memories into energy anyway. You chew through charges like crazy, and that's even more apparent on an Iron Man. There we go. 29 divination as well.
Construct a rope rack at the Baxtorian Falls House. Requires 24 construction, 3 oak planks, and 5 ropes. Training woodcutting to 15 is allowed to obtain the planks. 3 logs, 3 planks, ropes from Ardoin, up to Baxtorian Falls. Infinite rope. Enter a new resource dungeon. We'll go for the Chaos Druid one. It's the one with the lowest requirement, and unlocking it could be handy when I need herbs. It has four static spawns, Harrowlander, Eret, Marantil, and Ranar. Quite a useful variety. Find and cast Low Alchemy on a piece of polished Tokul in Tizkalzuk's arena. The polished Tokul can be found in the northwest corner of the Croesus Front. More of these random esoteric tasks, what's going on? Well, that's the Tokul there. Now we Alka in Zook's arena. Oh, I was hoping Zook would say something about it. Complete the natural history quiz in the Varric Museum. Hey, Hunter and Slayer XP would have been nice a lot sooner, but such is the nature of the beast. Because I'm a collector of trivia and a lover of animals, I think this is the perfect opportunity to extol a few animal facts I've gathered over the years. Leeches. The largest leech, the giant Amazon leech, can grow up to a foot and a half long. This world is full of monsters. Camels. Camels are even-toed ungulates. Artiodactyls. Horses are odd-toed ungulates. Parasodactyls. This means horses, rhinos, and tapirs are in a different clade than camels, giraffes, hippos, and whales. That's right, camels are closer to whales than they are to horses. Moles. The star-faced mole can smell underwater. It breathes out an air bubble and sucks it back in to get a whiff of the surrounding area. Penguins. I always forget these goofy little geyser birds. Emperor penguins waddle in spiral formations to keep warm, each taking turns at the center of the spiral where it's warmest, then moving toward the outer edges to give others a turn in the middle. Snails. Snails stab each other during mating. They have these things called love darts that punctures their mate during... during. You'd think this was some gamete delivery system, but nope. It's just some weird violent sexual selection that snails do for some reason because nature is baffling. Snakes. Snakes have tails, and it's not just their whole body. It's specifically the length of its body after the cloaca. Sea slugs. Many different kinds of marine invertebrates are referred to as sea slugs. Nudibranchs, sea cucumbers, and sea hares, for instance. Gaonor sea slugs seem to be most like lampreys or hagfish since they latch onto the host. But those are vertebrates, and sea slugs seem to be a bit too squidgy to have spines. Nudibranchs are tentacly like sea slugs, so maybe a parasitic version of them is a good analog. Monkey. Humans are monkeys. Now I know what you're thinking. Humans are apes, not monkeys because monkeys have tails. Apes don't. Ah, but you see, humans can be both. All humans are apes, all apes are monkeys, and all monkeys are primates. So humans are tailless monkeys. Catarine monkeys, specifically because our noses point downward. Lizard. A notable feature of many lizard species is their parietal eye, a third ocular organ just atop their heads. It's a very primitive light receptor that pretty much tells them if they're in the shade or not. Helps with thermoregulation and their circadian rhythm, among other things. A lot of lizards kept as pets have this, like bearded dragons and anoles. Dragon. Hmm. Well, there's the Komodo dragon, and Varanids are believed to be the origin of many dragon myths. You'd think they were close relatives to crocodilians, but they're actually closer to regular old lizards and snakes. In fact, crocodilians' closest living relatives are dinosaurs. Fellow archosaurs. Yeah, dinosaurs are still alive, but nowadays, we call them birds. So while trying to find images for this video, I learned that another living relative of crocodilians is turtles. The reason why I didn't realize this was because of the next fact about turtles. Either way, it seems like scientists are pretty convinced that turtles, birds, and crocodilians are all archosaurs, and they're the only living line of archosaurs left. Although it's more interesting to say that crocodilians are more closely related to birds than Komodo dragons than they are to turtles. I mean, you can kind of believe that turtles and crocodiles are related. Crocodiles and birds? That's kind of weird. Turtles. Scientists don't know where to put these guys. It's not clear if they're archosaurs, or lepidosaurs, or a third group entirely. Recent evidence seems to suggest they're closer to crocs and birds than lizards and snakes though, so they're likely archosaurs. Wyvern. Uh, I guess pterosaurs are the closest animal to a wyvern? Not actual dinosaurs, you know. Technically speaking, only animals in the Dinosauria clade are dinosaurs. Anything else is something else. The largest pterosaur was Quetzalcoatlus, with a 10 meter wingspan and about the height of a giraffe. Terrifying, with a peak. Terror bird. These were real animals. Extinct now, but if you ever need more proof that birds are straight up dinosaurs, here you go. Also, look up a cassowary's talons. Calphite. Hmm. Calphites seem to be based on dung beetles, a type of scarab beetle. Although beetles tend not to be the smartest creatures on the planet, especially the ones that collect poop, what's amazing is that dung beetles navigate using the position of the Milky Way in the night sky. 
The evolutionary history of animals is weird and amazing. When I was a kid, I loved dinosaurs. I wanted to be a paleontologist. I got older, things changed, but I still always thought they were awesome. I also loved birds. So can you imagine how ecstatic I was when I learned that birds didn't just evolve from dinosaurs, but they are still dinosaurs. Velociraptors were tiny little things covered with feathers. Dinosaurs never went extinct. Not fully, at least. All lines, but the avian dinosaurs went extinct. <laughs> and now we got these silly little bozos hopping all over the place. Oh, they're great. I love them so much. For readability, I'm going to record the task get slash task complete screen a bit differently. I'll try a couple different ways of recording the screen and see how that works out in the edit. I'll be reading each task out loud anyway, so if it's visually unappealing, well, this is just background noise after all. Complete a game of Cabbage Face Punch Bonanza and buy at least one Slayer VIP ticket. Back to Punch and Monkeys. The task said to get at least one, but I'll get two since I have the points for it. Unlock the ability to craft unholy symbols. Speak to the spirit of Scorpius by the Red Salamanders at the Aranya Altar upon completion of the observatory quest to learn how to craft unholy symbols. Our constellation is Libra, the two pan balance, the symbol that's on the law rune. Looks, uh, looks just like it. I know this isn't an original observation, but honestly, what kind of deranged connect the dots were these people playing when they made them up? These, these, con they look nothing like what they say they look like. Well, that's nice. We get three law runes as a reward because we saw Libra and 30 crafting. For from the reward lamp, chat with the ghost who's powerful enough to communicate without us having to wear a ghost speak amulet, and he gives us an unholy amulet mold. I think I'll need an unholy amulet in the future for a clue scroll. We'll come back and get one blessed when the time arises. No sense going out of our way right now. Before we roll our next task, I want to return to the Ark again and find some birds and castaways. These things don't show up every day, so I might as well jump on the chance whenever I can. Gong Dun Pelagorn, One Eyed Willy, gross, Swabby Steve, Azalea Oakheart. Follow the gold brick road. Well, let's see what the hell this is. It's a Menaphos thing. We gotta interact with the sundial in the Menaphos library, which is exciting. We can do the Jack of Spades quest, which unlocks access to Menaphos as a whole. Lots of content here, and I think there are quite a few passive tasks locked behind those giant stone walls. Jagex, what's a new player supposed to think when they see this? So after finishing the quest, we come to the sundial at the bottom of the library, and we twiddle the gnomon to spell out the names of each of the district's leaders. Then we get rewarded with a flying carpet. If I'm not mistaken, this was part of some ARG thing Jagex was doing leading up to the release of Menaphos. This was another period of time where I wasn't actively playing RuneScape, so I have no idea what it was all about. Register a total of five unique items in the Asgarnia and Mistlin section of your Slayer collection log. I'm gonna go for the left skull half. The sooner I can make the skull scepter, the better. It's dropped by Ankus, so it might be a bit tough, but if I could safe spot them with magic, it shouldn't be too hard. If I can't manage it, I'll go get a different piece of the scepter. Oh, that was fast. But it was much more frustrating than I thought it'd be. Dragon Breath kept aggroing everything, so I had to make do without it, which meant slower kills. But it only took six or seven kills to get the skull half. Obtain a unique from the Anima Islands, back to Tuska's corpse. I'll get the gauntlets. They're a bit better than the Pathfinder ones, so why not? Unlock the unexpected diplomacy relic power. The seal of the Praefectus Praetorio is required to unlock this relic, which can be obtained by turning in the Zerosian 1 collection to Soren. This requires an archaeology level of 25. Nice. Time to train some archaeology. Man, archaeology isn't as easy as I thought it'd be. Now that we're inside Cardet proper, we need to excavate seven artifacts from the first three lowest level spots. Legionary remains, Castra debris, Administratum debris. I'll likely level beyond 25 archaeology, but that can't really be helped. Sometimes you don't get the artifacts you need, and you never get enough materials without having to over-excavate. That's by design, actually. Jagex wanted there to be a market for materials. If you got all the materials you needed to restore an artifact while excavating the artifact, then no one would buy or sell them. Not relevant to Iron Man, but, you know, Jagex needs to think about the pleb mains every now and then. I'm just teasing, I love you guys. Ended up getting 31 archaeology on the way to getting and restoring all nine artifacts. The relic is pretty good though, especially since I have nothing else anyway. It'll make Trink's tasks on Mazcab just a bit more rewarding and get us closer to using those rangers much sooner. Oh, son of a bitch. Obtain a clue scroll from a monkey in your backpack. A tedious as all get out achievement, but it does mean we get to start, which means we can complete Monkey Madness. Before we can even start Monkey Madness, we need to complete the Tree Gnome Village quest, which we already did, and the Grand Tree, which we haven't. But to start the Grand Tree, we need 25 agility, and that means training agility the traditional way. Oh, agility is an outdated skill. Level 18. Now, we move on to the Watchtower Trellis. Yep, this one shortcut is better XP per hour than the Gnome course. 
And that's 25. Quest time. So the tree guardians done goofed and didn't notice Gluff placing Deconia rocks all over the place, but we don't know that yet, so shush, no spoilers. But look at that reward. Five quest points and nearly 20,000 XP in a combat stat. I'll have to think really hard about what I'll use that on. The agility XP is really nice too. Should get me to 31 or 32. It's a good thing the king sent an envoy to a gnomish hermit who can't speak his language. Hey Charlie, you dumbass, you messing with the tree? Ah, the benefits of monarchy. Rule of law be damned, the king can let any rando ransack your home. God damn it, Charlie. Gluff was a bad guy this whole time, and he has a demon. Classic bad guy. Body magic, 31 agility, but damn, what do I use this XP lamp on? A low level combat skill would get quite the bump from it, but upping my magic even further would be pretty great. That would push us further outside the soft cap. It's allowed, but do I really want to do that? I'll go with strength, even things out, you know? Time to go mad with monkeys. Oh, I need a gold bar for this quest. Where the hell am I gonna get one of those? Are you kidding me? That's impossible. I streamed this quest over on Twitch. Go follow if you want, or don't. My plan is to stream on Tuesdays and Thursdays at noon EST. I'll either be streaming Taskman or Ferris Noise doing PVM or something. Whether I actually stick to that schedule remains to be seen, but the fact that I'm putting it in a video is kind of lighting a fire under my ass and making it so I, I, I kinda, I, I gotta stick to it. Needless to say, the demon wasn't particularly easy to defeat because of accuracy, but I ended up managing it because somebody in Twitch chat told me to go to the Mazcap supply shop and get some super magic and super defense potions. It did help. With the quest done, we need to stuff this monkey full of bananas. So we need bananas. Where can we get bananas? From a banana tree, of course. You know, potatoes actually have more potassium than bananas. Lots of minerals and vitamins, actually. The much maligned potato. Poor thing. People decided to deep fry potatoes and cover them in cheese and bacon, then blame the potato for being unhealthy. Oh, thank Christ. This didn't take very long. Like, 100 bananas. This took over 500 on Ferris Noise. That was rough. And I already had those bananas banked. Task round? Not so much. Obtain the four balloon animals. Join a balloon party in the Falador party room to obtain them. Goat, cat, sheep, dog, done. Gain access to the practice chest area in the Thieves Guild. Let's do buyers and sellers, then the first mini quest afterward. Just some innocent arson, thievery, and larceny. We now have access to the best thieving training method until 62 thieving. These chests right here give a ridiculous amount of XP for their level requirement. It is a world hopping training method though, so it's a little annoying. That's enough for today. Remember to check me out on Twitch if you're interested in Twitch stuff. Thanks for watching.